Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at a, um, a situation where we have a word problem that is um, talking about cost and then uh, uh, cost per student. And we're given a table and then we've got to graph that information. So it's really completing a table based on a word problem, then the graph, and then determining whether the, the relationship is proportional. So this is from CPM course two, uh, and this is section uh, 4.2.3, uh, and this is number 4-51 specifically, okay? So um, let's, let's think through this. So let me read the question. So it says, the choir is planning a trip to a water park, to the water park. The cost to use the school bus is 350 So the cost to use the school bus is $350. Complete the table at the right, then graph your result. Is this a proportional relationship? So here's our here's our table. We know that the total cost, right, is three fifty to use the school bus. So the total cost is three fifty. So if there's ten students on the trip, how much would we? would the bus cost per student? How do I do that math? If I there's only 10 students and I wanna know what is the cost of the bus per student, I would take what? That total cost of the bus and divide by the number of students, right? So 350 divided by 10 is 35, right? So if there was 10 students, the cost per student would be 35. What if there was 15? Again, we do the division, right? So I'm going to have to divide. So each time, each time to do this, I'm taking 350 and dividing by the number of students to determine the cost per student. So three, 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 um, 350 divided by 15 Um, is it, so to do this, to do the math on this, um, I, I probably, depending upon what your teacher says, but I would say a calculator would be okay because we're just trying to determine our cost. Uh, but if you had to, you could take and do this math by using long division if you weren't allowed a calculator. So I'll show that real quick. But if you were allowed a calculator, then you can just do the division that way. But just to show it this way, if you were not allowed a calculator. Uh, for my students, I would allow a calculator on this question at, for homework. Uh, so 350 divided by 15, let's see, that goes in, three, 15 goes into 350, it goes in there twice, because that's two times 15 is 30. Subtract, you get five, bring down the zero. So 15 goes into 50, three times I multiply, I get 45. And then if I subtract again, I get a five. And if I wanted to keep going, you notice what's gonna happen. I bring down, I had to add a zero, bring down, add a decimal, bring down the zero, I get 50 again. So what's going to happen? I'm going to keep getting this three times four, 15 to get 45, and I'm going to continuing to get a remainder of five. So it'll be this three repeating, right? So we're going to put that in terms of money. It would be $23.33, right? If I have a repeating three, if I'm putting in money, there I have it. Good. All right, so what about 350 divided by um, 20? So again, you can either use the calculator if you're allowed or use the long division, and you should end up with 1750. So for 20 students, it's $17.50. So for 35 students, we can do that one now. So 35 into 350 would be 10. So it'd be $10 per student if it was 35 students. Okay. So I got my, I have my points here. Now they want me to take this, these points and graph them. So let's look at what we have. Uh, again, my first column is always my X. My second column is always my Y, right? So this is my X. This is my Y. And remember here on our graph, your horizontal axes is always your X. Your vertical axes is always your Y. So if I have my X's, 10, 15, 20, 35. I'm going to probably be here. I could go by fives. So we'll go ahead and do that. 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay. I'm not quite using all of the, the graph, but it'll make it easier that way as far as my numbers. So then these here, I can also do the same. I can go by fives or I can go by something else. I know that we're dealing with 17, 50 and $23 and 33 cents. So those are going to be a little bit uh, different than by fives, but just to, just to make the graph consistent, I'll also go by fives. Oh, and by the way, this, I need a label. What is this? This is number of students, right? And then over here is going to be the cost per student, right? So my, my Y axis is cost per student. My X axis is number of student. So I'm going to again, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So if we graph this, graph my points, my first point is X is 10, Y is 35. So X is 10, Y is 35 is right here, right? X is 10, Y is 35. That's this point. Remember, these are these represent points. This, this here, this, these two numbers represent 10, 35. That's what that represents, where, where you have your X, Y. So your X is 10, your Y is 35. Where is 10, 35? It's right there. So then what about 15, 23, 33? So 15 and then 20, there's 25, there's 20. So 23, 33 would be maybe right about there. We'll estimate. At 20, it's 17, 50. So here's 15, here's 20, 17, 50 just happens to be right in between them. And then 35, at 35, it's 10, right? So there's that point. So if I look at this, this graph, and I'm asking myself, okay, so even if I connected it, first of all, it's not linear. It's not, it's not a line. That's not a straight line. It's got kind of more of a, a curve shape to it, right? And if I were, I could, I could even get more points to determine what really is happening here. But my graph kind of looks like this, and I think it's going to just continue to go in this direction that way, and it's going to go in this direction that way, correct? And if I wanted to, like I said, I could put more points in. I could, I could say, what if 100 students were to go, right? If 100 students were to go, then 350 divided by 100 would be $30.50. Well, I can't fit 100 students on the bus, so this is not realistic. But I notice what's happening. If I put 100, I'm going to be way out here. It's going to be a lot smaller. So it just kind of curves along the axes. Same thing with this. This is going to just curve that way. So we've got this graph and now it's asking, is this a proportional relationship? Well, this is where we, we hopefully know that no, it's not. And why is it not? Well, because remember, there's two things that it has to be proportional. One, it has to be a constant rate. It has to be a line when you connect the dots. And that is not a line. That's a curve. So it's not constant, right? So I'm going to write why not. Why not constant rate. That's one reason. Uh, so no, because, right? So it wants to know why, why is it? No, because not constant rate. And the other thing that it always has to do is it has to contain a zero, zero, right? So, uh, so does not contain zero, zero. Meaning if there were zero students, it would cost me zero. Well, no, no matter what, the bus is 350. So if I want to go on this field trip and it's just the teacher and I have no students and I'm taking the bus, it's still going to cost me 350. So no matter what, the bus is 350. So there is no zero, zero. And if I look at my graph, I can see zero, zero is here. This thing will never end up crossing that zero, zero. So this is not a proportional relationship. There you go.